All right. So we have an unboxing. Yeah. Like it wasn't enough for the camera. <clears throat> yeah. And I didn't do an unboxing there. So, yeah. <clears throat> now, uh, with the camera, I got the tilt adapter, which gives you access to the tilt screws from, like, say, behind the camera. That's <clears throat> completely useless when it comes to the refractor and to my Edge HD. I also got the um, the Ellen House filter. Yeah, and uh, to be fair, even though the L Extreme is better, uh, <clears throat> I decided not to get that one. Uh, it's not just a price uh, thing. So <clears throat> the thing is that the horizon here is a lot more broken up than I'm used to with, for my old place. So I want to be able to get as much light I can, yeah, <clears throat> and make use of the short time I have between the rain clouds and the and the uh, and the tree tops that I have. <clears throat> so I want to go fast. Yeah. Low F values. So I have the uh, Edge HD telescope, <clears throat> and you can get the Hyperstar for that telescope, which brings you down to F uh, 1.9. Yeah. Uh, like 390 millimeter focal length. Yeah? That is really nice. <clears throat> the only problem with that, or not the only problem, but one of the problems is that then I'll sacrifice my uh, Edge HD uh, high focal length telescope <clears throat> to do uh, like wide field stuff. So I can't use like, and then I have my uh, uh, um, F2 telescope with my and my refractor and that's like the same thing is only that one is a lot faster <clears throat> so it would be nicer to have like an f2 telescope and uh, the uh, high focal length uh, um, edge yeah so then the rasa would be a nice thing yeah <clears throat> now when i'm looking at the rasa uh, it's like it's uh, narrow field um <clears throat> it's very um a uh, small image circle uh, it's got very narrow uh, uh, back focus and that like puts a bit of uh, stress on the the other equipment like the camera now i have the duo with the uh, uh, <coughs> little guide ship which i might want to be using uh, if i can so then that's going to start being <coughs> um, uh, outside the image circle and it didn't feel like a gamble a good gamble to do that i'm trying to find if everyone has used it but it didn't look like it wasn't a very good selection with it this camera yeah it's like <clears throat> the image circle in the aps-c sensor it's like you, you you clipping the corners and stuff so <clears throat> i i thought okay well i'm just gonna skip doing uh, like an f2 or a fast telescope but then i found this thing yeah I'm going to turn this around. Let's see. Ah. <clears throat> A very fast little Newtonian. So this is Omegon um, Pro Astrograph. Maybe. We'll, we'll take a look. <clears throat> so I've been looking at that and the TS Optics um, Astrograph. And I uh, they look the same. Uh, say for the logo on it. I don't know. Maybe they are the same. Maybe it's this. I don't know what's the difference between Omega and T if there's something. Mer well, I don't know. <clears throat> but anyway, they look the same. They're the same specs. So I just decided to go with the Omega, which was uh, available at the stores that I was buying this from. So I decided to do that. <clears throat> so I got this, and I also bought a uh, electronic focuser because I thought uh, days of focusing with that mask is over. Yeah, I have to join the century. So <clears throat> I'm gonna crack this up. And I also got a little like a laser culminator. Yeah. I never culminated a <clears throat> Newtonian before. Package came with a small dent here uh, <clears throat> and in the side here. Now I'm I know that the actual telescope is within a nice aluminium box itself so i hope that is safe <clears throat> it doesn't look like it's going through more than just the surface layer so that it's i, I think it's okay uh, but <clears throat> it's been opened <clears throat> i do think that they opened up, up at the the store because they put the electronic focuser inside yeah and if i peer through i can see the box with the telescope so, and it's heavy enough so i hope it's still in here <clears throat> So 
So I guess I'm gonna let the smoke out now. Might be inside this box. Indeed, in here we have a focuser with a little remote control for it. instrument box more mm, look at that <clears throat> so in the box we have an OTA uh, wrapped up in plastic so this box looks okay I can see no damage <clears throat> of any kind on the outside of this I thought this came with like a vixen style um, <clears throat> uh, dovetail, but <clears throat> I actually said so on the uh, specification. But this is uh, Lost Mandy. That's good because that's what I have on my mount, my C gem that I'm using. <clears throat> that's good. Uh, yeah. So to get the plastic off. So this is the Omegon Pro Astrograph 150 over 420. Yes, yeah, so it's 150 millimeter mirror and 420 millimeter um, focal length. And that is including the field flattener. I think there is a field flattener reducer. Uh, yeah, there's a flattener. <clears throat> yes. I'm going to shave off color of that one. <clears throat> Again, I guess that doesn't matter. So that would be a, a 4 M48 <clears throat> here thread. The filter slider is M48, <clears throat> which I'm using. Uh, and then it's adapted to the uh, camera. Focal length from, from that thread is supposed to be 55 millimeters. So, in the box, we also have a little uh, uh, M48 <clears throat> to 1.1 and a quarter inch adapter, which is going to be used with the uh, culminator that I just bought. <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty much the sole purpose of it. Yeah, this is not an optical telescope, so you're not going to be using any any uh, eye pieces or anything <clears throat> but that's that uh, we also have oh it's a culminating eye piece and then there is some uh, an allen keys for them different sizes <coughs> to use on the culmination screws Now, I have heard something that these screws might cause some reflections. Don't know. I mean, they're black, but <clears throat> just looking at, down here, they do look shiny. So, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I guess otherwise we'll have to try to solve that somehow. The rest of the inside has got like filth 
black filth which feels and looks very good <clears throat> yeah but those screws might actually prove to be something if we see any strange reflections <coughs> uh, that might be the reason but we're not gonna let that be an issue before it is an issue <clears throat> so there we have the electronic focus then Uh, focuser is on maybe i need to do some adjustments to that uh, like i really want to have that turned around so it doesn't stick out the <coughs> outside the front and like that there's nothing shiny more than uh, the red part but um yeah uh i would just prefer to have it the other way like 90 degrees or something yeah okay <coughs> so what we're gonna do now we're going to get this one off. Let's take this space. Yeah. <clears throat> Does that look beautiful? I think it does, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, pretty much we're just going to have a camera. Camera's got the uh, USB hub. I'm going to connect that to that one. <sighs> so, we're going to work on this. Uh, we're going to get our whiteboard out and just do some calculations of where we're going to be. How much this builds? I think that was like 16 or something. 16.5. Was it 20? Oh, we have measured things. All right, so that's it. Right, so yesterday uh, we got this packed up, uh, mounted, and uh, got the camera sorted with all the back focus. <clears throat> Thank Yeah, it's about 55, and uh, with a filter, I think we should go for 56. So <clears throat> don't know if we're going to need a little adapter in there. Um, uh, at some point, but we'll we'll just start with it as we have it right now. Uh, yes. <clears throat> um, so what we're going to do now is culmination. Going to check the culmination. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to need to remove the camera and the field flattener. I uh, suppose. <clears throat> imagine that's going to stay there for culmination will it will it matter maybe not <clears throat> for next part here we start by looking into the um <clears throat> provided uh, culmination eyepiece yeah yeah <clears throat> so maybe we can get that but you see the dot there uh, that's the center mark on the primary mirror. I think that should be in the center of the um, <clears throat> eyepiece reflector, which is right in there. Yeah. Uh, now, <clears throat> uh, I know uh, the central obstruction here is not um, like centered uh, in these faster Newtonian, so things might not actually look perfectly centered like that. Dot. So I don't know. Uh, I'm going to have to stick the um, laser culminator on here and we're just going to follow through that procedure and we're going to see how, how it looks. Yeah. So here it is. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So without further ado, let's just get going. Yeah. So I bought one that <clears throat> was recommended for this type of telescope. It's all metal and no plastic parts. It's supposed to be nice. Uh, I also heard that you can use these three screws <clears throat> to uh, line this, the laser uh, in case <clears throat> the laser is not in, uh, aligned. <clears throat> there we go. 
to me, it actually looks like the laser is very centered in that little <coughs> uh, central tape mark. Yeah. It actually does. Uh, so I'm not going to adjust that because I don't know if that would be very good. On this one, on the other, <clears throat> yeah, that would be this, the primary mirror that should reflect the laser back straight into the center, which it isn't. Yeah, so we're going to be doing that. <clears throat> and to do that, we're going to use <clears throat> these screws. <clears throat> yes. So uh, I'll have to make another check, but I think the smaller one is the set screw that basically just pushes on the on the back of the mirror or the uh, mounting just to secure it, and the other one is to adjust. To me, that actually looks pretty good. <clears throat> that looks a lot better, doesn't it? <clears throat> Like when trying to line the uh, reflections of the crosshair <clears throat> in the uh, reflective part of the eyepiece here with a crosshair on the that we can see there it actually looks like we are pretty good <clears throat> so yeah I'm gonna say that was successful yeah oh yeah maybe I should actually stick the laser back on and just check that we didn't <clears throat> do anything with the yeah, secondary mirror Right, <clears throat> so so now that still looks like it's fairly good. Yeah, might be touching the side a little bit. That one looks like it's back in the center. So for doing it the first time, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, didn't take that long. Well, it took some 20 minutes, but I think next time, I mean, we have this set up now. Uh, I know it's pretty culminated now. It's just if any of these um, adjustments is not, if maybe I didn't tighten things up and it's more sensitive to motion or something. Maybe that's uh, something that could affect this. But otherwise, I think I have a pretty good idea of how to do it. And I can do it again, easily enough. Yeah, so I just have to put the culmination to in the toolbox i'm not sure i'm going to be using this i mean i could use it like i did first just to see if anything looks off <clears throat> by basically just uh if this is a good combination and i know that this is how it's supposed to look then i can just look for that but i mean it doesn't have to be far off for it to be bad yeah <clears throat> so i don't know we'll see yeah that's it uh, yeah, now we'll 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 just wait for some some clear weather to test it. Yeah. So I, yesterday I just had the camera on. Uh, I tested the electronic focuser and that works uh, beautifully. Uh, yeah. Alti, what are you doing? Are you trying to raid Houston's food bowl? <laughs>